Carla Renee. The website is www.sugarpearlsonline.com. YouTube is Sugar Pearls, S-U-G-A-R-P-E-A-R-L apostrophe S, and Instagram is Sugar Pearls underscore online. Uh, so tonight is going to be, we're going to do some lobster, we're going to do a little bit of shrimp. We're going to do it in a really light linguine. I already got my linguine cooked. And the only sauce, if you want to call it sauce, uh, is really just going to be a little bit of lemon juice, some olive oil, some garlic. And butter. A little pat of butter. This is my bright colored asparagus. All I did, I cooked my pasta first. And then I poured the water off, but I left some water in the bottom. It's my little, my little steamer pot. Left some pasta water in the bottom, added a little more salt, and then placed my asparagus in the basket so that it could steam up. Look how bright and pretty. Yes, now I'm not going to eat too much of that. I'm going to eat a little bit. But, you know, asparagus can make you... Make your urine smell funny, so I ain't going to have too much of it. All right. Uh, and we've got our lobster tails. Yes. So I'm going to butterfly these babies, and then we're going to steam them first in our pan. We're going to steam them. You can put them in the oven and broil them if you want, but I'm, I'm just going to steam them. And uh, then we can get started with the rest of the recipe. And I can find out how you're doing. Okay. So let's get started. Now. Let me just show you. Can you see? No. You can't. I can actually move my tripod now. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I um I hope you guys have been having a great week. Uh, as always, I hope you've been being kind to yourself and to others. I actually have a little story about that. I've always got a story, Jeff. But my story is about how I was not so kind and I had to make amends. I'm going to share. Okay? Don't worry. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So you've got your... Lobster tail, what you want to do is just cut it straight down the middle with your kitchen shears, all right? Make sure you got some kitchen shears that you only use in the kitchen, okay? Not when you're hemming a pair of pants. Not to open a potato chip bag. Kitchen shears, okay? So I've got some nice sharp ones here, and I'm just going to... Slip my uh, scissors right down over the meat and under the shell and just snip. And you want to snip until you get to the last part of the tail. Okay? Don't cut through that part right there. Alright? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it kind of intact. Now, if you, um, if you just wanted to do a plain lobster tail on top of your... Oh, this is not, okay, crack. Oh, that's it. Okay. After you slit, just crack. Got it. Okay, and that loosens up the bottom of that and the top. So now I can just go here, open it up. I'm mangling this thing. Oh, there we go. And just start to pick the meat up out of that. You can slide your fingers down and feel where you're getting right there until you just lift it up. Now, if you're doing a fancy dinner uh, with a lobster tail, this is what you would do to butterfly your lobster tail. Okay, once you lift it up and put it over, uh, oh, close up that tail, just lay it over there. And that's how it looks in the restaurant. So then when you season it, it kind of puffs up and it's sitting on a nice little shell there. Okay, and that's how we're going to steam it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the pot. Oh, it don't 
want to cooperate. Okay. Alright. Before I sit it in there, I want to season it. Okay. No, no, I got to season everything. So, one more, one more again. Okay. Slit. All the way till you get to the last one and stop. Crack. Just squeeze. 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 There you go. Now that was much easier, wasn't it? See, we're, we're doing this together. When I say cook with me, that's what I mean, honey. We're a team. Okay, and just start to lift it up away from the little, the cartilage here. Okay, close that shell back up, lay it on top. You've got yourself a nice butterfly lobster tail. All right. Let's season them up. Get them steamed. Now, my uh, my friend Ty at my grocery store, he um, <laughs> anytime I want like seafood, I always go see Ty. He knows exactly what I want every single time. So when I went today and I was like, I need some lobster tails for my supper tonight. He says, I, I got your, your little ones that you like. Nobody buys them. But I oh, I like the little ones. The, these small ones like this, like palm size. They're so much sweeter and they cook up a little more tender than those gargantuan um, lobster tails. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, look up on a nice tender piece that's really large, but for the most part, I, I just like to down a couple of the little ones and it's, I'm all, all Gucci then. Okay, so now I'm just going to season up with a little bit of, let me, let me bring you in. Okay, a little bit of my seasoned chili oil. Salt. pepper, little garlic powder, not garlic salt, you got enough, and a little paprika. And that's it, boo. We're going to lay them in the pan. See how easy that cleanup was? Okay. You'll know your lobster tail is ready when the uh, shell starts to turn bright red. Okay, that's a great indicator. The red lobster. That's exactly. Hey, Valerie. Hi there, Angela. Hi, Willie. Oh, you guys. Hey, Tamika. Ah, oh, thanks for being here. Yay. Okay. Watch my smoke. I turned the lobster off because it's done. It is done. Uh, now for the asparagus. All I'm doing right now is just kind of turning just to make sure I get it all coated. All the seasonings that I put on it, I want to make sure it's just right. Okay? And believe it or not, it's done. That's it. That's it. This is the... There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy. Alright, now let's remove the lobster and put it on this. Now, all that water, let me, let me turn you back to the subject at hand. So the water that, I want to take this water up to boil. I want to reduce this by half, okay? Because I want to keep some of this. I want the flavor of my uh, lobster tail, but I don't want so much of that water, okay? So I want to really bring it up to a nice boil until it 
you know, gets where I needed to be. And then we're going to take it back down, okay? Uh, we will add this in just a little bit. Put that to the side. Mm. My, my. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, see? Okay, so now you see how it's starting to come up? Let it go ahead and boil and just let it do what it's going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. A little pepper. A little garlic powder. Now, um, I'm not really doing any white wine. I didn't buy any white wine. So, I would like to add a splash of white wine in here, but I don't have any. So, we're going to flavor this uh, water, this lobster water, so that it's, it's nice and then it just comes together with the sauce. Okay? All right. All right, time to get the asparagus off. See, and it stayed nice and green. That is what you want. Nobody wants old, not green, wilted asparagus. See how pretty that is? You want to eat that, don't you? Of course you do. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay? All right, so that's done. Oh, this, this is doing a thing. It is really doing something, okay? So let that go. When this comes out, I mean, when this gets where I want it to be, I'm going to pour it out, and then I'm going to kind of, um, what you call it, sweat out my onions and my garlic, okay? Just a little bit, and add my garlic paste later, okay? Right now, let's, uh, ooh, I forgot I got shrimp. Got shrimp too. Trying to drink water, Chad. Well, don't worry, I'll have a little wine later, but you know, I'm just trying to do right. I'm trying to live long. Hope y'all are feeling fine. Hey, hey, hi. <laughs> make sure you are sharing can i sing while i cook no have you heard me sing lately it's atrocious mm -mm. nobody wants me to do that no <laughs> okay so this has reduced and look look at that i got a little bit of i got a little something going on here look at that that's flavor sug pull that off Cause that's, that's going back in there just a little bit. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, there we go. Okay. Sometimes the peppers get caught in there. So this is the sauce that cooked up. Okay. So once this, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. It's lemony, it's garlicky. I just put in the pan. You know I'm a lefty. <laughs> so uh, one Roma tomato, uh, two garlic cloves, and a piece of sh a shallot. Yeah. Right, season everything. A little salt, a little garlic powder. Oh, this is gonna be a garlicky, lemony, fragrant dish. Okay. Now, once that goes for a little bit, you want to add just a little pat of butter, and then you're gonna to toss in your raw shrimp. Saute that until the uh, shell of the shrimp turns slightly pink. And then we'll be ready to throw the pasta in and, honey, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To the garlic paste. This stuff is amazing. Now, if you're not a fan of garlic, um, because you're a vampire, I get it. That's okay. I love the stuff. Absolutely love the stuff. Okay? You don't have to add as much as I'm adding. But, uh, <laughs> trust me. It's, ain't nothing wrong with it. All right, get my little pat of butter. See, I didn't use the whole thing, just a little. Just a little bit. Now you're not cooking these um, vegetables until they are brown. You just want them to sweat and get a little soft. So not mushy, just a little softened. Right now this is ready. That's all we need, three, four minutes to get them sweat out. Add your pat of butter. I'm going to bring you closer. I need you next to me, boo. Come on over here. Okay. Add, um, there you go, sugar. Okay. Turn that up. Because when you put the shrimp in there, you want it to kind of cook fast. Okay, turned up, raw shrimp, okay, just like that, okay, more lemon, it is a limonade dish, so there's going to be lemon and garlic all of that is going to make our sauce just awesome okay and make sure it stays kind of high i can go ahead and pop these out it's cool enough now Yeah, that's it. And I'm probably gonna chop. Oh, there we go. Excuse me. Okay. Once I start to turn pink, I can start to turn it now. See that? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, that sauce that we took off, this lobster sauce that we cooked up, pour that on in there. Okay. Now at this point, if you want, oh, that's good. Stir, stir, stir. I need to make sure everything is evenly coated and nice and pink. Okay, I'll flip that one. And our fresh organic linguine pasta. They say the word's organic. I don't know what that means, child. But anyway, so I'm just gonna with my kitchen shears dice up a little bit of lim uh, lobster like some big ones in there so not too small let somebody have a nice little surprise and they go oh wait that's a big old lobster all right now everything is nice and pink now can add your pasta. Oh no. Okay. A little bit 
bit more. All right, I think that'll do it. Okay, stir, stir, mix, mix. Make sure your pasta is completely coated with all that lusciousness you cooked up. It is lobster linguine limone. Okay, I want to add just a little bit of tarragon. I don't have any parsley. I would have dressed it with a little parsley, but I can sprinkle some tarragon on there and that'll do the trick for now. Yo, can you believe dinner is done? Dinner is done. Okay, let's get this out of here. All right. Yes. Gotta keep the stove clean now. Come on. You know me by now. Okay. So now let's get ready to plate and hold on what you say. <laughs> hey cousin. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we ready. We ready, y'all. And it ain't even eight o'clock. Okay, so on my mama's princess house plate from back in the day, this this plate got to be old as me. Probably. Some lobster. Ooh, I'll do a little more. Shrimp. I'm going to save some because you know I got to take a picture of this uh, tomorrow. All right. Mm hmm. Yes. All righty. Little tarragon for looks. And a little hard cheese. Yes, yes. And because I, I well, I cooked the pasta ahead of time, um, but you could totally do that yourself. This meal didn't take 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, but look, you got your lobster tail, your shrimp, nice garlicky, lemony sauce. Nothing heavy about this dish. <laughs> I want you to make this. Yes, red or white wine, honey. I drink white on, I mean, drink red with everything. I do not follow follow the um, sommelier's rules. I don't. I, there are no rules as far as I'm concerned. I just, y'all, this doggone lobster limone is going on the menu. Real lobster meat, not that bag stuff that people be saying they they making lobster mac and cheese and it don't be no real lobster. I can't stand that. It don't need no heavy sauce. Okay, let me taste the lobster. Ooh, it's tender. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. 
You can broil it for this dish, but I suggest steaming it. I'm just saying, it's just my advice. That's all. Lobster Limone. Ooh, honey. Mmm. Super tender, all the way down to the end. Now, for those of you that are new to Sugar Pearls, I try to give like little tips and tricks for the kitchen. So if you don't remember my asparagus trick, try it. When you buy your asparagus, trim the bottom off just about an inch or so, right where it starts to feel kind of wiry. Stick it in a glass of water in your refrigerator and it will keep just like a flower, okay, for about a week. Okay, that way if you're not going to eat a whole bunch at one time, you can still have some to that's uncooked for later. All right. Time for a little conversation over dinner. Okay, I'm going to turn Moonchild down a little bit. Let me find this. Okay, so the question is, do you think, let me scroll up, hey, <laughs> do you think that we are ready to open up? I don't, now, that may be different from where you live. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I say no. I don't know. How about, hey, Jackie? Where where you live, are you guys ready to open up? To put this country back to work again? Hmm? What say you? What am I looking for? Here we go. So I'm, I think every state now in the country is partially, if not all the way open. So, here's why I say we are not. No, Jackie says no with an exclamation point. Are we ready to open up? Lord, I got to get another taste of this. Hold on. Let me eat some shrimp too. Shrimp is good. Mmm. <sighs> Mm, 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 mm. We are in Florida. They have opened up several businesses in phase one that includes beaches. Ladidra said, nope, not ready. Nope, nope, nope. Um, I think, I think I saw on Facebook that this is bike week in Myrtle Beach. And I know, um... I mean, I got a lot of friends and family members that, you know, are bikers that go to the beach and all of that stuff, you know, spend their money. I don't know. What, what y'all say? No, ma'am. Technically, everyone never shut down. I personally feel South Carolina should have gone on a mandatory shutdown for at least three weeks. At least. Y'all know they scared of what the other folks gonna do because they, you know, this is all such a political mess because governors are afraid to do the right thing because they are worried about not being reelected, which is a shame that you would put politics, um, over the health of the people who would actually vote you in or out of office and if you have no regard for my life my safety 
my family's life, then you ain't getting my vote. Mm. It's like a scampi almost. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. It is political. So, let me give you. I feel like I'm too high. Let me give you the CDCs. Uh, and now the stores have lines wrapped around the corner just to get it. Home Goods, Ross, Marshall, Burlington, ridiculous. Uh huh. Child, they trying to get it, honey. If it's the last thing they do, and for some of them it might be, I'm not willing to risk my life for no sale. Yeah. So, the funniest thing that I read was from the CDC this week about guidelines for reopening uh, schools. It is, let me, let me just read it to you, okay. This came out uh, May 19th. This is for schools now. Think about the schools where your children go or kids that you know. Okay, think, think about those schools. All right, let me read to you the guidelines. Wear masks if over the age of two. Okay, that's reasonable. No sharing of items or supplies. That's what we've been teaching all these years, but especially elementary school. Hey, share, share your crayons, Jimmy. Yeah, we, we okay, moving on. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces between uses. Okay. Develop a schedule for increased routine cleaning and disinfection. All belongings separated into individual cubbies. Excuse me. Ooh. Or labeled containers. No sharing electronic devices, toys, games, or learning aids. I can't tell you how many times I've seen kids share the ear pods when they, that they use for the little Chromebooks. When they, yeah, somebody lose one and they're like, oh, I got another pair. And they just, mm-hmm, that's, that's, that's the school I know. That's the school I know. Okay, next. Um, oh, this is fun. Desks should be six feet apart and all facing in the same direction. Go ahead, baby. Six feet in a, the, the schools I know, the schools where I work and have worked, the classes are overcrowded. The schools are overcrowded. So how are you going to tell teachers that in their classroom, the desks need to be six feet apart and all of them face in the same direction? Okay. Uh, next. One-way routes and hallways, okay? Tape on sidewalks and walls to ensure kids stay six feet apart. No shared spaces, including cafeterias and playgrounds. This is getting dumber as I go down the list. Physical barriers or screens between sinks and bathrooms. Child, the schools where I work, kids be in the bathroom playing, and throwing water and standing up on the toilet seat, uh, throwing tissue at each other from over the. Okay, next. Only prepackaged boxes or bags of food instead of hot lunch lines. That might be a good thing because some of the lunches ain't been. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, kids eat lunch in the classrooms. No field trips, no assemblies, or external organizations in the schools. Uh, some children stay with the same staff all day. Now, the elementary school where I came from, uh, that was a normal day. 
They had them kids all day long, except for specials like PE and art. And, I mean, the teachers couldn't even get a bathroom break because they got the same kids all day long. Uh, no switching groups or teachers. Stagger student arrival and departure times to limit crowds of kids. Limit volunteers and visitors. If possible, daily health and temperature checks. You know what? This is the most asinine thing I have seen. And it's from the CDC, who obviously don't have no kids that go to any schools anywhere in the United States of America. Nobody asks any teacher, any school administrator, how this needs to be rolled out because this really y'all really who mess is what it is mess stay with the same kids all day they doing that anyway no y'all just put something out there to make trump feel better so y'all can we can all get back to the get back and if that's the requirement for starting school, then guess what? We ain't ready. Because that is unrealistic. I'm, I'm going to be a naysayer here. It cannot happen in America's school. Not the schools where I work. Mm-mm. Nope. That, maybe in Beijing somewhere they do that. Were they all walking in the line six feet apart? Mm. My God. But not here. I don't know. I'm all of this foolishness. Just for politics sake. Not because they care about my life or yours. If those are requirements for going back to school, you really think now is a great time for you to be catching a sale at TJ Maxx? You really think that? You really think it's time um, to be opening up churches so we can be jumping around each other and crying and pleading the blood all over each other and you you think that's a good idea? Your, your president don't even go to church, so that don't affect him. I said it. We ain't ready, folks. We are not ready. We've not been doing the work, the research. There is no cure for this thing now. Um, we ain't ready. We just not ready. All right. That's my soapbox for today. It is not a good time to be um, going to the beach. Yeah, you might wear a mask and you might do the right things and, and making sure that you're not, you know, spreading or contract, but you don't know what other people are doing and how they're living. So no, I'm not going to nobody else's house and all of this stuff because mm -mm, I don't trust it. Not now. We ain't ready. All right. That's enough of that. Y'all can go down to Bike Week if you want to. Um, Bring me back a souvenir, but I ain't going to. Not. Not, not, not. All right. Confession time. So, um, this quarantine has been a lot for us. Just to, like, be confined to a, a space for an indefinite amount of time, that's a lot on one psyche, you know. So, you know, I always ask y'all to... 
be patient with, with, with one another. You know, somebody in the line taking a little bit too long. Just just be patient. We quarantining together. Okay? This is this is not an easy thing for any of us. <laughs> she said, I don't even want a souvenir for that. Yeah, keep your souvenir. I don't even want it because you might have Rona on it. So don't bring me nothing. Never mind. I take that back. I don't want nothing. I don't want it. Uh, so my plea has always been that we will just be patient and kind while we're going through this thing. And hopefully it'll spill over when we get back to the get back so that we continue to be patient and kind and loving. Well, this week, honey, your girl... I, I had a moment. <laughs> I had a moment. This was uh this past Saturday. I'm I'm really embarrassed to to say it, but I need to say it so that you know that I'm I'm just breath and bridges. That's it. Okay. So I you know how you get your mouth ready for something. So my favorite pizza place here in Charlotte, they were they happened to be closed on sun on this past Saturday. Why I don't know. Anyway, so I said, well, I'm gonna order from another place that I know makes pizza pretty close to them, and I like that real thin New York foldable cheese dripping. That's what I wanted. Okay, just a little medium pie. That's it. No wings, no nothing, just a little pizza pie. Okay, so I called this other place to place my order. Well, actually, I, I didn't. I called um, one of the little food delivery things, um, the Postmates. So I called the Postmates, honey, to deliver um, my food. Not call them, but, you know, put it in on my phone, on the app. So... And, and they're good. They send you notifications. We have received your order. Your order is being made right now. Terrence is walking out with your order. Terrence will be there in 15 minutes. So I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, okay, Postmates, y'all better update me on my, on my New York pie. Child, they sent me a message saying, your delivery driver, Terrence, is downstairs is outside go meet your delivery driver terrence who's outside so i uh get go downstairs and i'm looking i'm outside i don't i don't see nothing look like no delivery driver nothing i said well, okay let me just wait a little bit so i'm just waiting 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 no pizza all those updates and no delivery whatsoever. Okay. So I go back upstairs, hot and bothered. Honey, I had my mouth fixed for this pizza. And I was livid. So I call Postmates. And I'm like, where's, where's my order? Y'all send me all these updates. And, and nobody ever showed up. How does somebody just not show up with my with the order? So the young lady on the other end of the phone, rest her, bless her heart, bless her heart. She she tried um, her best. She was doing her job. She was. Now, I'm telling this this all on me now. Okay, now I'm being honest with you now. So. So she's explaining, oh, I'm sorry, mom. Um, um, what I can do is I can give you a credit toward your next delivery. I said, I don't want no damn credit. I'm not ordering from you again. I want my money back on my account, back on my card, the same card that you took my money out instantly. I want it back on there instantly. No three to five days. I want it back there right now. Hold on, ma'am. Hold on. Don't put me on hold. 
I don't want to, I want you to do what you got to do with me right here on the phone with, child, I was, ooh, ugly, ugly, I, I upset myself, so, after she put the money back on the account instantly, um, I ordered from DoorDash, where I started to order from the first time. Did DoorDash, got my pizza instantly. No problem. Okay. So now I'm satisfied. Okay. But I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't happy with myself. Because I acted like an ass. To this young lady that didn't have nothing to do with it. So I called back. I called Postmates back. And I said, this is, you know, Carla. I'm calling back. Um, I, I don't know the name of the young lady that I spoke with, but if you look back in your records, you'll see, you know, this transaction from my number, you know, whatever. Um, I, I need to apologize and I need to do it right now. So, um, this time it was a young man that answered the phone. So he was like, oh ma'am, you know, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You know, uh, I said, no, no, no. Like, I'm I'm sorry. Because the young lady that I talked to was trying to do everything possible to make me happy and make this right. And I wasn't having it. And I was rude. I was short. And she didn't deserve it because she didn't have anything to do with that. So I need to apologize to her. Well, she was on another call. But he was like, ma'am, like it's okay like if if i ordered something and somebody didn't deliver my food i would be mad too i said yeah i understand you know and 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 that's true yeah i probably have every right to be upset but that wasn't cool that wasn't cool i said well if you can't get her he said well she's you know on another call right now i can't you know transfer you I said, well, I just need for you to make sure you relay the message and tell her my name. Tell her my name and make sure she knows how very, very sorry I am for being so short and so upset um, when she didn't have anything to do with that. I was upset. I was upset and, and I was wrong. <sighs> so I had to tell y'all that. Yeah, I know. I know. So I'm, I may look like little Miss Sunshine, you know, but, you know, some, there are times when things just get my goat. I'm just like, how do you just not deliver my food? But I was mad with the delivery driver. Shouldn't have been mad with her. Agreed? Agreed. So, I share these little things with you um one because this is my therapy session and you are peering through the window of it right now sometimes um there are things that you know take us to places where we feel dismissed disrespected dishonored and the only thing we know how to do at that moment is lash out thank you but i didn't i honestly didn't tell y'all that to commend me for apologizing because i heard somebody say a long time ago it's nice to say i'm sorry but it's even nicer to not have to. I shouldn't have had to. Um, but I did because it was my fault. And that's why I don't understand like this world that we're living in now. When you're wrong, say you're wrong. I, I know some people just want to be... You know, I want to be right. I'm going to make my point. I don't care whether you don't like it or not, whether you hear me or not. I'm a... Mm. That's what 
why we can't get nothing done. And then we not even uh, kind enough to reflect and apologize for the error of our ways. So I said all that to say, no matter what it is, I don't care how big or how small, I don't know how me um, lashing out at that young lady made her feel. So you don't know when you, when you spewing your stuff, you know, it, it lands on people. And it has the ability to either make people feel good or, or make them feel pretty bad. Pretty bad. Um, so we just need to be careful and kind and patient with one another and with ourselves. I had to forgive myself for that. I did. I've had to forgive myself for a lot of things. Because <laughs> Lord knows I have made some messes in life. I have. But you know, when, when you mess up, clean up. Clean up. It is okay to clean up your mess and then say, I made a mess, but I cleaned it up. Because the things you do and say have repercussions. We do and say have repercussions. Um, and, and I'm just, um, I'm, I'm at a place, I think, in my life where, um, I make fun of myself a lot. Um, I can be quite self-deprecating. <laughs> I can, I can. Nobody can put me down like I can put me down. So when it's time to like lift me up, sometimes that's hard because I've been so used to like beating myself up. And maybe you've been the same way too. Take the gloves off. No, you, you can't run from yourself. You absolutely cannot, but you can forgive yourself. And you can give yourself grace for mistakes because none of us, not one of us, not one person is innocent. That's why when you have a jury trial, there's no such thing as an innocent verdict. It's always guilty or not guilty. Why? Because babies are innocent. Little animals and critters, they are innocent. Okay? But grown folks, you you might not be guilty of that, but you guilty of something. That's my word for tonight. Yeah. Forgive yourself. And uh, realize that, that we've got so much more. We got, we got a much longer way to go. That's why I know that this space we're in right now, this ain't the final stop. It's not. But it's going to reveal a lot of things about us. And we'll be able to take those lessons because that's all we can do is, is hopefully make sure those lessons are big enough so that you and somebody else gets it. Because the stuff we go through ain't just for us. It's for other people too. Your blessings, your accolades, that's not just for you. It's for somebody else to see what is possible 
even the, the hardships that we endure, when people see you still getting up and, and going at it, that's a lesson for them. It is teaching people how to walk through, through hardships, dangers, hurt, depression, suicide attempt at the suicide attempt. I'm telling you what I know. Let your life be a lesson, not just for you, but for everybody that can see your walk, child. You may be bruised, you may even be battered, but you ain't buried. That's the best lesson of all. I want you to take care of yourself this week. Do something good for and to yourself this week. Doesn't have to be huge, but whatever it is, make sure that it's meaningful. Don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. You do it. Nobody can treat you as good as you. I love you. And I hope you love me back. Thank you.